Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Thursday, October 24th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of medicine with some exciting news in HIV research. Thanks to antiretroviral drugs, the lives of those living with HIV is certainly much better than it was many years ago. But these drugs, which are expensive and have side effects, must be taken every day of that person's life to keep the virus in check. However, about 1% of people infected are dubbed controllers and demonstrate long-term control of the virus without any permanent use of antiviral drugs. After much investigation, scientists from Northwestern Medicine have likely discovered how those individuals do it. Even these controllers cannot fend off the virus at first. Their initial immune response is quickly defeated by the virus. That is because the initial response comes from the adaptive immune system which learns to recognize particular pathogens, but which the quickly mutating HIV virus can adapt away from. Controllers have an abundance of a particular protein that contributes to the intrinsic immune system, which recognizes fundamental properties common to viruses, bacteria, and other invaders. Called the A3 protein, it is found in multiple immune cells, including the resting memory T cells, where the virus normally hides when it's dormant. When the virus begins replicating again in the controllers, some of that extra protein comes along for the ride and essentially disables the virus before it can cause a second damaging infection. Even though this is a natural mutation within a percentage of the population, employing this kind of mechanism may not be as complicated as a gene therapy or other options. Allowing more patients to act as controllers may be as simple as starting at antiretroviral drugs earlier in the diagnosis. The idea is that by starting treatment early, you prevent the virus from damaging the immune system as a whole. That way, even a normal amount of the A3 protein may still be enough to offer the protective effect found in natural controllers. More investigation is needed, but it's still very exciting news. Next is an update from the world of technology as it applies to renewable energy. If you are a long-time viewer, you probably know that we often talk about sewage because many people are investigating generating power from waste. Another favorite of ours is solar energy, especially when it's used to split water into hydrogen. Now, some researchers from UC Santa Cruz have created the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup of Renewable Hydrogen. Yes, a hybrid microbial fuel cell and solar splitting system. Many groups have developed each technology on their own, but these systems usually require a little extra power and voltage to actually split water. But by combining these two methods together, the system can be completely self-sustaining and renewable. Certain bacteria break down the organic compounds in wastewater and produce electrons as their own metabolic waste. This provides just enough push, adding to the energy generated by a submerged photovoltaic cell. The result is hydrogen and oxygen, which can be stored and burned as a totally clean fuel source. The prototype model was only producing about 0.05 cubic meters of hydrogen per day, but this was an extremely small-scale test. The researchers were actually encouraged by this level of production and plan on trying a scaled-up version. And eventually, they will attempt to install this hybrid system directly into a sewage treatment plant for a constant supply of microbe food and to offset power consumption of the plant itself. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. What creative combination of technologies would you create? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.